Hi, this is Dean Miller back with another video of the significance of the life of Jesus. This is in Matthew chapter 18 verses 10 through 14. In the NLT Bible, Jesus warns against looking down on others in the parable of the lost sheep. So beware that you don't look down on any of these little ones, for I tell you that in heaven their angels are always in the presence of my heavenly Father. And the Son of Man came to save those who are lost. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, what will he do? Won't he leave the ninety-nine others on the hill and go out and search for the one that is lost? And if he finds it, I tell you the truth, he will rejoice over it more than over the ninety-nine that didn't wander away. In the same way, it is not my heavenly Father's will that even one of these little ones should perish. So in verse 10, it says, Beware that you don't look down on any of these little ones, for I tell you that in heaven their angels are always in the presence of my heavenly Father. So Jesus is saying, Beware. Jesus is telling you to give this attention. He's telling you, Don't look down is to think or, or to despise any of these little ones, which are other Christians. And Jesus' command is to treat one another with a sense of value. So we're not supposed to look down on Christians, other Christians. And how can we look down? By causing others to sin, which was in verses 5 through 9. Failing to comfort the, a fellow Christian, sin or vengeful, vengeful motives, verses 15 through 20. Failing to forgive, 15 through 20. And the Father God sees all these actions as, a child, as child abuse and he will not tolerate it. So Jesus then gave one reason why we are to view fellow believers as valuable. He mentions of these believers, angels, is an indirect warning of judgment against those who would mistreat his children, which are the believers. So in Matthew's Jewish audience, who he wrote this to, was typically understood that every Jewish person had a guardian angel. And that's not scripture. There's no mention in scriptures that everyone has their own guardian angel. But there are angels out there that are ready to be dispatched by God. So this always means that the believer's angel always has the immediate attention of the Father. So in the presence of my heavenly Father implies being in constant full attention. So God has constant full attention of what's going on in your life. And he's got these angels sitting around him that are being are waiting to be dispatched by God to come and help his creation. So then verse 11, which is left out of some manuscripts, but it, in this one it, it's left out, but I'm going to add it in there. It says, And the Son of Man came to save those who are lost. And the key word is came. He see, seeks for all, believers and non-believers, not one is outside of his scope. Jesus left the heavens for this reason. He came down as a man from heaven to pursue you, to come after you, and to find and to forgive you. Believers and non-believers can get lost or go astray. Believers who are weak, immature in their faith, who are stubborn, lack the interest of motivation, selfish, or try to find an excuse, or maybe they're just lazy, they don't want to be found, or they don't want to find God. In verse 12 it says, If a man has a hundred sheep, and one of them wanders away, what will he do? Won't he leave the ninety-nine others on the hill to go out and search for the one that is lost? And once again, a parable is where Jesus is using an everyday, something that happens in everyday life as a parallel to, to show a meaning. So this is kind of a short little parable. And you see here, Jesus is asking a series of questions. He says, here you see Jesus explains his father's protectiveness and the love for his children in another way. And what better way of getting people's minds thinking by asking them these questions? So he's got their minds thinking what, what what he's talking about. If one sheep wanders off, a believer who falls into a pattern of sin, departing from the pattern of righteous living, suited to God's children. So that's what Jesus is talking about, one that falls away or kind of backslides. So this parable of the lost sheep was to focus the attention on the lost sheep over the 99 who stayed in the place. So Jesus' purpose was to correct a misconception that the believer who sinned was less valuable in the Father's eyes than the rest. In reality, the Father views all his believers equally. Even the lost sheep and the ones that didn't stray away, he views them all equally. He loves them all the same. So the emphasis also draws attention to the Father's grace. God wanted the universe to know that he is a God who pursues his own and rescues even those who rebel against him. 
So how did Jesus show this love of the Father or the Shepherd? He left the 99 behind. He searched through the hills in the dangerous terrain, and he continually searched until the sheep was found. In Israel, the terrain was really hilly, and there was lots of dangers in there. So it would be hard to find a sheep that wandered off in that wilderness. So you see a persistent God who, who persistently searches for you. This shows that God cares, and that he knows that you're missing, and that he misses you. You see that the shepherd doesn't send another sheep to go look for the sheep either, or another shepherd. So he goes by himself. He takes it personally. Jesus personally comes and looks for you. Verse 13, it says, And if he finds it, I tell you the truth, he will rejoice over it more than over the ninety-nine that didn't wander away. And if he finds it, he tells you, I tell you the truth. Jesus is telling you the absolute truth. Do you ever think you are lost from God? <clears throat> is God hiding from you, or are you hiding from God? God's all-knowing and all-seeing, so you can't hide from God. So God's always seeing what you're doing. He always knows where you are. He's just coming to, to see if you listen to his call. So the shepherd relies on two things, and God relies on this also. His voice and his willingness for the sheep to listen. So we need to listen to his words, and then we have to have that willingness to listen to the words and to respond to them. And the further the sheep gets from the shepherd, the more the voice of the shepherd dies out. So as farther we get deeper and deeper into sin, God's voice or his words will get drowned out because we're our own w willingness not to listen. So Jesus loves to restore you. The shepherd wants the, sh the sheep to hear and respond to his words so he can come back to the shepherd. Just like God, he wants us to hear and respond to his words and repent so we can return to his flock. The other believers, so we can fellowship and glorify God. And when he finds that sheep, or when God finds you, the lost, he will rejoice over it more than the other 99 who didn't wander away. So think about it like this. You have three children, and you sit down to eat dinner, and two of them come to the table and one's missing. So you go out and you start looking around and, and calling out for your child to see where they're at. And you start looking around and you can't find them. So you leave the other two at the table who are inside your house. You know they're safe. And you go out and you start looking for the one that's missing. So as you find the one that's missing. And you find out that they're not hurt or they're not dead. Or, or something bad didn't happen to them. You, bring, you feel rejoiced. You, find, you get a great sign of relief knowing that your child's safe. And that's how Jesus and God look at it with us. They go out and they look and they find us. But they're not worried about the 99 that are sitting back or your two kids that are still at the home where they're safe. They're worried about the one that they can bring back to the other 99 or the other two kids you have. So if we look at it like that, we see why he has such a relief because he knows finally you're safe and you're back where you need to be. <clears throat> and this is how God feels when one of his Christians go astray, like I was saying. When he come home, to him, he feels great relief and great joy because all his children are back safely under his watch. So the shepherd who finds the sheep would usually put them on their shoulders and carry them back to the herd. Just like Jesus would do if we let him carry the weight of our problems on his shoulders, he'll carry us back to God, right? Jesus will return us to our great shepherd, God. Does this mean that God or the shepherd loves the straying sheep more than the 99 that stayed back or the other Christians that stayed back? No. <clears throat> he has a joy for every one of us. The lost sheep, the lost Christian, and the, the Christians that stayed obedient. He loves us all the same. <clears throat> he just don't want the risk being that you are lost forever. And there's a great joy for deliverance because of the investment God puts into you. And the shepherd that, that he has made for his flock. You have a value to that shepherd. That sheep has a value. You have a value to God. That's why he created you. Because you're a value to him. And then verse 14 kind of answers that too. It says, In the same way, I'm not... In the same way, it's not my heavenly father's will that even one of these little ones should perish. So God doesn't want to see any of his little ones perish, but to have everlasting life. If we don't make it to heaven, it's not because God didn't try to get us there. 
He wants us all there, but when we are lost, we're not listening to his call or hearing his call. <clears throat> we need to make sure that we're all in the place where we need to be and under the watch of that great shepherd who is God. We need to lay our burdens on Jesus' shoulders so he can carry our lost souls back to the rightful place in the safety and the fellowship of other believers. <clears throat> this love of the shepherd also shows that Jesus cares and has a personal relationship with you. He loves us all, and he loves us all equally. Even though you don't think you're worthy, and you feel like you don't love him, God loves you. Jesus loves you. And he will forgive you. He will forgive you for running astray. <clears throat> when he comes looking for you, calling your name, listen. It's our job to listen to the call. Repent, turn around, and run from our sins back to the arms of God. Like Peter when he was sinking in the water. He knew in the middle of that storm, the safest place he could be was in the arm's reach of Jesus. And that's how we need to be. And so there's a quote that says, What is worse, us getting lost and looking for God, or us losing God and not missing him? You know, what's worse, not knowing God, not missing God or losing God and not missing him at all? That shows that you don't, that you don't want to be saved. Anything other than the right relationship with God will make you miserable. So don't backslide as a Christian. And if you do stray and you do start doing things, man, just listen to the call and come back. Because <clears throat> I, I guarantee you, you ask Jesus for your forgiveness, he will forgive you. No matter what you've done in your life, he will forgive you. Amen. Thank you for listening to my video. Uh, please like my videos on Facebook, subscribe to my channel on YouTube, like my video on YouTube, and please share the videos. The more we can share these videos and get the word of God out, that's the whole point of me doing these videos is <clears throat> just to do a short video on spreading the, the message and a, the good news of the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. So thank you for listening. Please comment in the comment section. Thank you. Amen.